One of the other features that we will look for when recommending footwear is having a zero to low drop. There are multiple benefits for why we want this. First being, it's going to balance the weight distribution across the foot. This is going to minimize load on the ball of the foot. When we are walking, we put eight times our body weight through our forefoot. So for people who have any type of pain in the forefoot, we don't want to be adding more load too fast and too quick. So that is one of the benefits of having a zero drop shoe is you allow the foot to be in the position that it was designed to be in. One of the other things that we want to consider when it comes to a higher heel to toe drop is the position of the ankle. It all comes down to basically use it or lose it. You know that if you're in a higher heel to toe drop position, you're essentially living in more ankle plantar flexion. And if that's the case, then we're not getting into our full range of motion. We also know that over time, staying in this more plantar flexed position will cause the tissues of the posterior chain to shorten. That's where we're talking about the calf, the Achilles, even down into the plantar fascia because it's all connected. So in order for those to be healthy and to have access to our full range of motion, we need to be using it on a daily basis. Now there are times where we will have to transition someone from a higher heel to toe drop shoe into a zero drop shoe. They might not be ready to be in a zero drop shoe if they, for example, have a history of restricted ankle range of motion, an Achilles tendinopathy, a plantar fasciopathy, and in those cases, we can start them with an experience line where there's a four millimeter drop. It's going to shorten the posterior compartment a little bit, which is okay until we start to improve function at the foot. Then when they improve function, range of motion improves, foot strength improves, then we can transition them into a zero drop shoe, something like the Escalante.